Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the channel. I'm gonna do a quick video to show you how to convert a Lyft rental scooter. This is the um, M365 we're gonna do. How to convert it from a rental scooter where you would need the phone, Android, iPhone, to ride it to a personal scooter to where it has a regular display, um, the four light display, or you can even put a Pro Dash on here. I'm gonna show you real quick how to convert it, very simple. Make sure you acquire your scooter legally. If you wanna know how I acquired all my scooters, and we have a lot, click the link above, and um, above right there, right there somewhere. Of It'll show you how we acquire a whole lot of scooters, but um, let's get started. We got a few of them going on here, so I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step as quickly as I can, how to do it, and what you're gonna to need to get this done. So to get started, we are going to start with the basis. It's going to be the first thing you're going to want to do when you start converting your scooter. Step one, you're going to want to lay your scooter on its side. And here on the plastic base plate, you're going to have 17 screws. All the lift scooters that I have found all have a security type screw. When I say security screw, this is a six six um six corner um bit here what's the number on it? i should have got that ready let me see what this is this is a uh what does it say cr dash vt one zero um regardless you just want to get a, a security toolkit you might find it at your local hardware store i cannot find one at a slows or home depot but I did go on eBay and type in security bits and found this kit for probably $20 and it arrived in less than a week. So um, it was local here in the United States. Uh, but you're gonna need someone, something like this. If you see here, some of the bits here, they're called security because they have like an open notch. Some of the lift scooters I found have a screw that has a notch in the middle of it. And you'll need that opening there to go over the notch so you can put it in place and unscrew it. But Regardless of however you do it, you can um, use these to get the 17 screws out. You can even get a Dremel and put a disc on there and cut a line down the middle of your screw and turn it into a flathead and use a flathead screwdriver to get them out. Whatever works for you. After I take them all out, I don't put the same ones back in. I replace them with Phillips screws. And the Phillips screw size, if you wanted to do that... What does it say here? They are machine screws M38 millimeter. That's what size you're gonna find. I found these on eBay as well. So you're gonna go ahead again, get this off, open it up. This is what we have underneath here. The scooter is four basic parts. You have your battery. On this side, we have our BMS board. We see our BMS board is flashing blue. That means this battery is still good. You have your main circuit board, you have your wheel, then you have the um, controller part, and that's your fourth piece. But the first thing you're gonna do before you do anything on here, of course, take the cover off, take that off. Our batteries in place is good, we're gonna leave that alone. But here, if you don't do this step first and get this piece off, this little jumper off, you're gonna end up blowing dashboards. So this is going to overpower. This sends extra power to the GPS so it's able to be tracked by lift. So for us, we don't need this. We don't want to be tracked. We need to take this off here. So I'm going to remove it right here. Pull that out of the main computer. Then I'm going to replace this. I'm going to put the battery straight to there. And you can't you can't get it on here the wrong way. There's Certain angles here, this lighting's not the greatest. Um, you, you can't put it in the wrong way, though. Let's get this plugged in. All right, that's plugged in. Finish taking the jumper out. Super tricky doing this with one hand here, trying to record for you guys. All right, this wire goes to your controller through the neck. So we're gonna unplug this from the main circuit board. You no longer need this piece here. Chunk it in your controller wire. Now plug that into the main circuit board. 
All right, that is step one. So we're gonna leave this open in the event we have to change the motherboard here. We don't know if the motherboard is good or not. There's no need for reprogramming these. You don't have to do all that. Whatever comes in, it's gonna work just fine as long as this is working correctly. So we're gonna leave it alone and leave this open. Step two, we're gonna to go to the controller. We're gonna do that. Step two, here's our controller. This is where your GPS is stored in the lift scooters. So we're going to go underneath the base of it here and look up. Let's see if the light catches it. Right in there, there's one screw, two screws and two on the other side. So you're gonna take all four of those off. Get your four screws out and the lid's gonna come right off here. You don't need that. Then inside here, we're gonna have some more screws. This is our main circuit board here. And we're gonna to need to get this off. Let's see, we have one, two, three. We don't need any of this here. These are a smaller H15 bit. And these, these are in here only hand tight. They're not tight at all. So it's gonna come out really easy. Underneath here, we can see this is this is the old GPS. Now, if you're working on a bird scooter, bird works almost exactly the same. On the birds, there are is not a jumper in the base. The GPS is actually up here, but this is the lift we're working on. So we can go here and just disconnect this. Put that off there. Now that's out of the way. This is just, just trash. No need for this. And here, same, same H15, one, two, three. Let's get those out. All right, we've got those three out. There's a hidden screw under this little cushiony part. It's right here in the middle. I can fill it. Looks to be the same size. Now this one here is actually the first bit that we started using the CRVT-10. That one's out. Cautiously pull your piece off there, get it out of the way. Don't need that anymore. And we have other connections here. We're not gonna need all these. Grab the outside here to help pull your controller wire that we changed at the bottom already. Pull that up and go ahead and just unclip that because we're going to need the gray wire. We're not going to need... Bear with me, it's a terrible video. <laughs> I'm going to leave my hands free. Um, but you're going to unclip that in another combiner wire here. We're going to need to unplug this. One goes to your controller, light, and throttle. So we're going to unplug those. We got that piece off, and there is a little plastic, I guess it's some sort of retainer or something, I don't know. But I find it easier to, to work on your controller here by just getting this plastic piece out of there. We don't need that. Here I have a pro circuit board. You can use the pro or the regular, it's up to you. With the regular, you are not allowed to make any modifications to the firmware on there. So I prefer to use the Pro. Aside from that, um, really simple to do. These are real plug and play. You don't have to modify anything. You can just plug this one in. As long as all your connections are good and everything's functioning properly, it's just gonna go. But I prefer this one because this has the digital readout where your regular model just has the four lights. But we're gonna use this. I get these on AliExpress. At AliExpress, I search M365 Pro Dash. Very simple, that's it. You wanna make sure whatever you're getting is a four prong, or this is four prong too. I think some come in a, a five prong, or maybe it's a three prong, where they'll line up, but you're gonna end up, um, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Don't waste anybody's time. Don't waste your time. So let's go ahead and get this out of here. All right, we've got it out of there. It's just so hard with, I'm recording with an iPhone here. However, um, it does have your dash as well. The dash has 
the two-sided tape on there. So you would just peel the dash and lay it around the edge of that. And same thing, got a piece that covers this entire piece here. So whenever you put your screen on there, it's gonna hold your screen in place. But as far as lining everything up, guys, everything's plug and play, everything matches. Our headlight, yellow and white. Our throttle, red, green, and black. Everything matches there. The brake, you see it there, it all matches. You can't just make sure you get in there the right way. Um, everything matches, so let's get it plugged up. I've got everything to plug up. Um, before I put it in place and secure, I do wanna give everything a check to make sure it's working right. Before you are able to change all your modes here, you're gonna have to update it. Uh, however, it does not stop you from using it if you wanna use it like this. It is in kilometers an hour. It's gonna read in sport mode to change. It's not gonna go to drive, but you could double click and it will go to eco. It's gonna skip the drive though. Let's see, one click, our headlight is not working. Tail light's working. Brake, brake's working. So um, with the headlight not working, it could be an issue with the motherboard or it could be just the headlights not working. So you can order those on eBay, look them up, M365 headlight. So being that we're not getting error codes, that means she's gonna rip like it is. So you, some people don't care to update it, that's fine. You don't have to update it. In order to see if it's working, this is gonna be crazy tricky here. You need to give it throttle, but to give it throttle without it already moving, nothing's gonna happen here. So let me try to set this up to where I can catch a spin and press the throttle at the same time. In order to test the motor to make sure the motor works, although it's plugged up and it's not giving us an error, it's not going to let us know the motor's not working until we try to see if it's going to work or not. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on, lift up the front, kick the wheel down and give it some throttle. So she's ripping it, showing there 26 kilometers an hour. We know it's good. This one does have a messed up front tire on it, so I'm going to have to change the tube on that one. But after you have that on there, get everything tucked down in here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to actually pull the cable out the side here to get it clean and tucked down in there. Tuck your extra wires in here underneath it. Be sure you're not gonna pinch anything. All right, they're all in there. Now you're not gonna have screws to secure it, but there's three spots inside of here. Inside here in the back, two in the front. You're gonna need an M2 by 10 screw, but just Google search that size M2 times 10. You might find them at a local hardware store. This one you're probably not going to find at Home Depot or Lowe's. I had to order those. But you're good to go. That's it. Now you have a, a working scooter. If this video helped you, give it a like. Let me know what you think I could have done better. Some info you wanted to see about the scooters. Next video I'm going to put up, I'm going to put the process of how to convert the Pro Dash so you can lift the speed limit. So we'll have unlimited speed on there the limitations you're going to have are the size of the motor and the battery but it'll get the scooter up to 18 miles per hour or at least faster than the 15 but also show how to convert from the kilometers to miles per hour so that's the next video coming up if you guys liked it again give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already until the next one we'll see you then